Hi, everybody. Okay, so uh, first off, sound check. Light. So check, let me know if you can hear me. And let me get rid of that one. All right, how's everybody doing who's excited to do some watercolor painting? That is always so much fun. All right, I have someone. So here's the thing, y'all. I don't know if you saw it, uh, but I am broadcasting through StreamYard and StreamYard will not show me your name. This is what they show. This is all I see, okay? So if you do not give them your permission to show your name, then it's hard for me to communicate, but I'm okay with that. If it's like something that you feel that it's your preference, that's fine. Just don't get um, uh, offended when I say, oh, somebody said this, or, you know, somebody from Minnesota says hello, okay? So hello, everybody. I have Leanne, hi Leanne, and Sonia and Colleen. Pugs love to watch art class live. They're already on the couch behind me. Oh, how fun. Um, just make sure closed captioning, I'm deaf. It should be, it usually goes, so it goes through my Facebook and Facebook usually does closed captioning. Can please somebody confirm for me that there is closed captioning? I am not sure how to do that through StreamYard. Um, let me jump on here real quick just to make sure. So that goes up here. Jump on here real quick just oops, to oops, make oops, sure. Oops. Here, yep. I have closed captioning. Okay, it's all in there. Okay, all in there, close everything. Click CC at bottom and saw your words. Click on the CC box. That doesn't help here. You know what? I'm gonna do the, I'm gonna just show it over here. Okay, yes, you should be hearing now. If you cannot, so here's somebody says um, blah, 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 here they ask if they should be hearing yes sound <laughs> sound up yes you should be hearing i'm live um everything's working fine leah thank you all right okay i don't see cc on facebook it's on the bottom Pretty much right, like somewhere around my finger. It should be there. Two letters, okay? Because it shows on mine. If I turn on mine uh, on Facebook, I can see it. Okay, so watercolor, capricious, flowy, fun colors, fun things, abstract, things that you can uh, do anytime, pretty much anywhere or things like that. So I believe that everybody saw my post on what paper to use, what, um, um, thank you, Colleen. So what paper to use, what brushes, what kind of paint, like we, I talked about it in that post. If you haven't seen, options are you should always use watercolor paper. Sometimes I use mixed media journal. So this is my mixed media. And here's what it looks like on the outside. It's a visual journal. It's Strath a Strathmore 100% cotton. Um, it is only 190 gram. The uh, water watercolor paper would usually be about uh, would usually be 300 gram, so that would be the best quality. But you can do mixed media. I wouldn't do it on uh, printer paper or anything like that because we put a lot of water into watercolor. Okay. Um, as for the pads, so you could have a pad 
depending on what you got, you can have a pad that is glued on all of the perimeter, like it's all attached. You cannot, you do not have loose pages here, okay? And so with this, you can just paint right on it. And then I like to use my palette knife. There is usually a little opening right here. And I just put my palette knife in there and I pull it out. But sometimes you don't have that, right? Sometimes it's either loose watercolor paper or maybe you have a pad like this one where it's, you know, just like a notepad. And so since we will be painting pretty much the whole page, which means we'll put a lot of water-ish on here, we will need to stretch the watercolor paper. So to do that, I like to use, I have this acrylic sheet that I like to use. You can even stretch it on the back of your sketchbook or like a cardboard box, anywhere that is um, sturdy enough to hold the paper and that won't get super soggy super fast. Let me know if you need clarification on that, if you need more help with that. Okay, as for brushes, yes, watercolor brushes are great. Of course, there is lots of options, and I talked about that also in the introductory post for uh, for this painting. I did have somebody ask me if they could use their acrylic brushes for this, and I said, yes, you can. I really did when I was just starting to paint. I just had one set of brushes, and I used them in between watercolors and acrylics, just making sure that I cleaned them very well. But then when I knew that watercolor had my heart and I really wanted to do more, then I just went ahead and invested in a better set of brushes. Okay, paint. So this is the set that I recommend in the guide. Uh, Winsor Newton set, I really like it. Uh, this is another set that I found really like it was a Facebook ad and I think they sent it to me like from Korea or something. I don't know. It took three months to arrive. It took forever. I kind of like this one, but sadly, like there is no brand or anything. They just, it is what it is, right? And I have these, which are my uh, mix and match. So I have a different, different and different. So as you see, I really do like my cakes. I prefer that, but you don't have to use them. I, I also have some colors that I really like and I could only find it in, in tubes. And so some of the colors come in tubes. So, you know, whatever works, whatever works. I really like using my Corel white plate <laughs> for mixing. Um, it's super easy to clean. It doesn't stain. So whatever this here is uh, something that I can just wipe off and mix some new colors. So I've tried, see there, clean plate. Um, I've tried a whole gazillion of different uh, palettes for watercolor and I came with came up to this. I love this. Okay. And it's what two dollars, three dollars maybe. I don't remember. But yeah, why not? Right. So we have all of that. What else? I have artist tape to help me stretch the paper and we'll do that in just a minute. And I have two jars empty right now i'll fill up fill them up with water i've been very accident prone uh today like i dumped a, <laughs> a jug full of paint water acrylic paint water on the floor and like i'm just dropping things all over the place which is why these don't have water in them yet because i know something's gonna something might happen so um i'll use one for clean water and one for dirty water okay i will explain why we have two as we go so you can fill them up pretty much like up to here 
um and up to here like with acrylics i'd say like stay here right but with watercolor you can fill them up pretty good um we're gonna need paper towels and we're gonna use uh waterproof waterproof pins i think i have them right here yes so i have like faber castell or a micron anything you have that is waterproof will help will work better okay so let's uh, see questions real quick that's a great question renee where do we find previous live videos i can't seem to find guides okay hold on just a second let me do this super quick so you don't have to look for it too far okay here so I'm going to share my screen super fast so that everybody can see where those are. Okay, so you're in the group. Here's guides right here. Do you see it? You just click on that. And here's your how-to guide, abstract watercolor flowers, loose bouquet. They're all here. Oh, here. Okay. And then I got to show you also something changed on Facebook. Let's take this back to here. So if you're on your app on your phone, um, oops, sorry, I cannot show it to you on my phone because it's plugged in as the camera right now. But like as you hold your phone in the top left corner, there will be three dashes. And if you click on those, it will take you to events, albums, files, I think, and something else. So uh, you might want to maybe explore that. Okay. Oh, my gosh. Somebody. Oh, no. Shatter the full glass jar of pear juice. Oh, no. That's a sticky, sticky mess. Okay. Let's paint. So let me know let's do this um if this is your first ever try with uh, watercolor in the comments put a zero in if you've tried a little bit like you doubled and you play put a one if you know what you're doing but you still feel like you need direction put a two if you're just here to have fun with whatever <laughs> <laughs> but you know what's happening put a three in that would help okay so i have one zero 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 hi maria from sydney australia wow that's a far hello somebody from new jersey renee two two okay two leanne one zero betsy one leanne one to Wisconsin. Hi. Hi, Patty. Oh, Patty, you found us. Yay. I'm glad I saw you. I'm glad you messaged me. And so I could hop in. I had like a two minutes, but I did a four. What are you doing here? <laughs> Stephanie, I hope you'll have fun. Okay. One, two. Very good. All right. Zero to one. Okay. All right, so we'll take it a little bit slow. And again, if you know what's happening, just feel free to go ahead a little bit and, you know, adjust, adjust as you need to. All right. So let's turn on the full desk view. I'm going to push my watercolor up. My reference is going to be up here so that I can still see it. So this is a completely um, uh, this is abstract and super flowy. So you can do whatever 
whatever you feel like. This is probably five by seven. No, yeah, probably five by seven. It doesn't matter. Any size you have will work as long as you have, as long as it's watercolor paper, you're good to go. I think this is five by seven here. It really doesn't matter, okay? You can just change it to scale the way you want to. Okay, so I'm kind of lining it up so that it works on the screen. I line it up on my acrylic sheet. You can use whatever back you like to. And I'm just gonna tape it to the sheet. And what this does, is that when they add paper water to this and the paper wants to like all buckle and like get all crazy this the tape will hold it in place and won't let it go too much too far okay also we're gonna need a pencil i totally forgot to tell you that so if you would grab yourself a pencil We're not gonna need to draw a whole lot of things, but just for the composition so that the composition comes just the way we want it. We would like pencil. Vicky and granddaughter Farron from Heath Springs, South Carolina, USA. Woo! Welcome. Stephanie says, I still need to learn a lot, but it is what I usually paint, right? I absolutely love going freestyle with watercolor because they are so, there is a lot of motion in them. And they're really freeing. Like you just kind of let go. And if you let go, they will take you. They will take you wonderful places, right? Okay, so this is taped. Now go ahead and grab a pencil. And what we're going to need to do is to draw, we're going to draw three circles. So let's look at this here so that we have a reference point, right? All these, they started with three circles, large, medium, and small. And you kind of place them kind of close to each other. You want to use super light hand as you draw, because um, you do not want to have any lines on your... Hi, Judy. Texas, yay, because uh, you don't want to see any lines. So I will draw mine super light, and if I need to, I'll just bring it up closer to the camera so you can see it. They do not have to be perfect circles. Yeah, you just want to make sure that you can see that one is... There, see? Kind of circles, they kind of will help you deal with things, okay? And for this painting, um, so normally when you would work with watercolor, they'll tell you to mix your color palettes on your palette and, um, uh, you know, add water to your colors and like all of that, mix it with water. So, but for this painting, we really need nice, oops, nice saturated colors. So I'm going to paint, I'm going to paint directly from the cakes, okay, directly from my pants, just to make it a little bit easier, I guess. Let me scooch this back a little bit. Okay, so let me add the water to my jars.
So your dirty jar is for rinsing your brush that has paint on it. And your clean jar is for picking clean water so that we can continue adding different colors to what we're doing, okay? So this whole painting really is about deciding what color where you're gonna place. I'm gonna follow a little bit. I'm gonna try and follow the, the reference photo. Um, if you wanna try and go freestyle, go for it, okay? So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna add, because these are dry, so I'm grabbing some water from my clean jar and I'm just dropping a little bit of water on my yellow and my really looks like cerulean blue. I don't think it is really cerulean blue, but it's close enough. Cool blue. And then some pink and maybe some blue that has some purple undertones. It looks like phthalo blue a lot. Maybe a little bit here. Just kind of grab, add some water to the colors you're going to use. And then I'm going to add some water to my greens so that they would start waking up. My, um, there's a little bit of magenta that looks super purple. So the story of this set, this is why I'm going to tell you why I do not know what these colors are what they're called, okay? So the um, story of this set, I used to live in Pflugerville in Texas, which is um, in the suburbs of Austin. And Austin has the store, it's called Creative Reuse Store, where people would drop off, like they would drop off at Goodwill, where people would drop off their unwanted arts and craft supplies. Um, how did she manage the land work? I mean, the flowers. I can't see the circles. Did she draw them from scratch or had a preview design ready? I can't see where you mix in your paint. I am not mixing anything. Okay, listen, I'm not mixing anything. I just put some water into my into my paint so that it would get wet. I'm not mixing anything at all, okay? And all I did was I put three circles that look hardly like circles, large, medium, and small, on my paper just to make sure that I have my lines so that I keep up with the size. Yeah, that's all we did. Oh, Judy says her daughter lives in Flugerville. Awesome! Yeah, you guys, draw the circles freehand. You do not want it geometrically correct. It doesn't need to be uh, perfect. And so I went to that store, and they had four of these, like with different um, colors, for 50 cents. So I, I took all four of them, and I completely make, I, I made two full boxes of watercolor, but the downside for it is that um, I don't know what they're called. <laughs> okay, so let's look at the colors again. I see that um, we need help with that, yeah? So here's what we're going to do. We're going to do the middles yellow. We're going to use some pinks, whatever you have for pink. Maybe you have rose color. Maybe you have magenta. It will all work. Then we'll use blues. Um, uh, this painting has a lot of cool colors in it. So this is more like a cerulean blue or sky blue tone. Okay. And then uh, yellow again goes in the leaves. And then greens will go around. Does this help? Let me know how you feel about it now. Okay, a great thing to do is if you have an extra page of your watercolor paper, is just to grab your extra page, 
grab your brush would make like a uh, draw a circle right there on your extra page draw a circle and then pick one of those colors that you want to use just pick it and put it directly into that circle and see what happens see the color you get okay you are very welcome I use the mini, really mini spray bottle to wet paints. Yes, yes, I do that. When I paint by myself, I do that. But I understand that not everybody has a misting bottle. This is my favorite thing, um, ultra fine mist sprayer. It's like one of my favorite things in the studio. Okay, so I did this and then I'm going to wipe the pigment on the paper towel, rinse it in the dirty jar. Okay, then grab some clean water, make another circle with water, and go ahead and grab maybe some of the blue from here. And just see, I'm just putting dots in there and it spreads. That's just gorgeous. And I'm thinking, okay, I kind of like this. Wipe it off. Dirty water first, get some clean water, make another circle. This is how I choose what colors I'm going to use. Okay, and then I, saw, I, I said I was going to add a little bit of water to something that looks like phthalo blue. So I'm just going to grab some of that and put it on here in the circle, just dot, 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 and it spreads in the water. This technique is called wet on wet. So you make your paper wet, and then your wet brush, your wet paint goes on wet paper, okay? Again, clean the brush, make, paint another circle with water first. Um, uh, Let's grab this one that looks like violet. Put it in there. Look at it and think, huh, do you like this color? Does it make you happy? Would you like to see it in your painting? Just ask yourself, do I like this? Make another circle. Okay, and then I want to grab some of that magenta. Yeah, it's total magenta. Now that it's wet, I can see it. It's definitely magenta. Oh, I like this one. This is super pretty. Ooh. Right? Clean the brush. Dirty water first. Clean water. Another circle. So this is something, this is a very cool exercise to um, get your colors under control. Yeah. Also, it's a good warm up. Yellow, this is warm yellow, just regular. Um, um, I would almost say primary yellow. Clean the brush. Clean water. Let's do another circle. Make sure your circles are not touching because otherwise they're going to bleed. Another circle. Oh, I forgot to put water in my lemon yellow. Let's do that. lemon yellow let's see what happens here do i like it do i not like it do you like it okay paper towel dirty water clean water <laughs> and probably the last circle here And I'm just going to go ahead and pick up some, some green 
chances are I'm not going to like it, but for the sake of exercise, right? Okay, something like that. And now you can decide what you want for your flowers. Okay, so for my flowers, I think I really like this yellow. I really like magenta. I really like this blue over here. So I think this is what I'm going to go with my flowers. The yellow, the magenta, and the light blue, kind of sky blue. And I think for my leaves, so see how I have this green here? I'm not so happy about it, but I know that if I add just a little bit of lemon yellow to this green, the color is going to change exactly into what I want, right? So we can just play with that and choose that. And so this is how I choose my color palette for um, abstract flowers like this so that I don't get overwhelmed, right? It's too easy to get overwhelmed with this. Okay. Once this is dry, and if I remember, and if I do not remember, please remind me. Once this is dry, I will show you how to add things to this, and then you can turn this page into very cool bookmarks. Like you can cut it along or tear it along, and you can make super cool bookmarks with that. And yes, I do have a bookmark lesson in the guides also that you could use if you wanted to. Okay, so here we go. <laughs> the first one here, the sander, it's kind of shaped like the backward C, right? So I'm just going to go ahead and grab my brush. And this is something that um, I suggest to watch first because it's very, like, you can't see what I paint with water, so you need to see where the brush goes, yeah? So I'm going to go in my large circle in the middle, grab my water, and I'm just going to loosely paint I see. Okay, now this is wet. Now I'm going to go ahead and grab some of my warm yellow just on the tip of the brush. See, right there. And then I'm going to just start dotting exactly where the water is. Just there. And maybe grab a little bit more paint. And just let it spread. Don't um, drag your brush on your paper yet, okay? Just let it spread. Okay, and now that I'm, as I'm looking at it, I want to make it a little bit more irregular. So I'm grabbing a little bit more paint. And then I'm going to dip just the tip of my brush into the water, just the tip. And I'm just going to add a little bit of irregularity to this shape so that it's not that kind of regular. So it doesn't look like I did try to write letter C. Yeah, just add like a couple of bumps. Just go dot, dot, dot with your brush. Just touch, 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 touch and move around. Okay, now I'm going to dip my brush in the water, just the tip of the brush, just a little bit. So I have a little bit more water and I'm just going to put a little bit of water right in there and it'll help my paint move around a little bit. Okay, wipe it down. Use the dirty glass to um, clean your brush. Next, we're going to do this flower, the, the smaller flower. Um, um, 
okay on this side all right and we're gonna do pretty much the same thing like a half moon circle and kind of right here all right so get some water on your brush paint like a crescent moon okay now grab some yellow and go dot 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 into the wet and sometimes it's real hard to see your water so i am i kind of end up ducking to the side and trying to to see here and there what's what's the best way to see because water will shine right it will look shiny on paper so you can see it okay pretty happy with that now the third flower it actually has a blue middle and then the yellow uh, petals on the outside. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna rinse my brush in the dirty water first. Grab some clean water. Paint the center. Doesn't have to be the exact circle. You can make it a little bit, um, um, extend it to one side or something. And go ahead and grab some of your blue that you chose and just put it right in the middle of how it flows so pretty okay um wipe off your brush clean and clean and clean water again and now we're gonna go into this area right here and we're gonna add some water and if if it's gonna um if it leaks a little not leaks bleeds a little bit with the yellow it's all good okay so cut get that area now i'm getting my magenta if you're using magenta or pink and i'm just adding it right to here And if I feel that my paint, like there is a puddle right here, I can, I use my brush, I dab it on my paper towel and I go back and I just lift a little bit, some of that water back into the brush, just like that, okay? And then I think, okay, we need a little bit more color. So I'm gonna grab a little bit more of that magenta and just, Put it on there the more you mess with it the worse it gets so you want to like you know put some color in it and leave it let it be okay on the paper towel in the dirty jar okay now let's grab some water and let's do the second flower and the second one i'm just going to go around that yellow that's okay that it's bleeding a little bit it's all good grab some of this magenta and i'm gonna add it on the outside and just let it flow in and see what happens there and i'm just gonna leave it you can see what happens okay clean this up again dirty water first then we go clean water and let's go all the way okay there's a puddle here i'm gonna pick it up a little bit with my brush super careful okay now i'm gonna go all the way up and then down it's going to be almost touching my blue circle so let me do this real quick since i'm already putting water on there and i will come back and i'll show you what i mean by this okay so there we go again with magenta
So you see how up here on the top, you have much more distance between this edge and the blue center and not as much distance here. That's what I meant. You kind of get it off center a little bit. Okay. Let's clean that brush. And we're going back to the first flower we painted and we're gonna add water to that circle. And I'm gonna make sure that my water overlaps the pencil line that I have here. I'm trying to not touch the magenta that is still drying. Because I do not want magenta flowing into my flower so I'm going to work around it until it dries and then we'll come back and see what's happening but pretty much this whole space oh, if you picked up some color you can just rub it off with your into your brush and your paper towel okay now I'm gonna go ahead and grab some of that gorgeous blue and I'm just going to go and add it on the perimeter, just dot by dot. You see how it spreads itself? It's so pretty. And just keep adding. Oh, looks like I left some area without water. It's okay. We just add water, just dot by dot, and we'll leave some white on there also. So if you have some whites, it's perfect. You want to have a little bit of white on there. Okay, brush goes on the paper towel. Rinse, rinse, clean water. Okay, now while I have the clean brush, I'm going to go ahead and pick up those little puddles that I've created that I know I really do not want them sitting there because I do not want this to take forever. Normally, I would just let it sit and dry naturally. But since we have a limited time for class, it might make sense to, to not do that. Right? Because nobody wants to sit there watching the paint dry. Okay. Let's get some clean water on the paintbrush. And... Let's, because this is going to be blue also, so let's just fill this with water. Things are going to flow. That's okay. Make it flow, make it messy. That's the point of it. Just add some of your blue color right on there. If you paint with me often, you probably notice that my cat shows up at some point and starts yelling and telling everybody that I never feed him and that he is a very, very sad cat. <laughs> Did you put water on paper first? So this is a question I just got. So hold on, let me get my mouse back up here. Um, uh, yes. So pretty much everything here today is going to be wet on wet. 
except for the background. The background is going to be wet on dry. But everything else, I think, is kind of wet and wet and wet. Oh, leaves can be wet and dry. Yeah, but the, the flowers are wet and wet. Okay. Now let's... Go around this one and try not to touch the blue too much. But if you do, it's no big deal. It's just going to add interest, more interest to your color. Into your flowers. There we go. Okay, and that one is yellow, so I'm just going to go ahead and grab some yellow. And just did, just do this one yellow. All the way around. A little bit more water. My paints are drying so fast. I'm going to add more. So I'm not very really happy with my line over here. So I'm just adding water to my brush. And just with clean water, I'm kind of expanding. That circle, kind of making it a little bit bigger. Okay, and then I'm going to grab a little bit more of that yummy, juicy yellow. And just add it to the perimeter. All right. <laughs> okay, clean your brush. Okay. So, our next step is painting the leaves. And I'm going to go back to our practice sheet right here. Just to, one, show you the stroke, and two, show you what else you can do with this paper now that you've practiced your color on it, right? So for the leaves, you are just going to add, you're going to, okay, we're going to figure out what kind of green we want to use, okay? I thought this one was a little bit not there. I really like those yellowish leaves. So... Let's mix a little bit of color for us to use. So we're going to put the brush in the clean water. You know what? I'm going to use my plate because it's clean. And you can actually see what's happening. Okay. So I'm making a small puddle of clean water. See it? It's right there. Then I'm picking up some of that yellow that I've been using. It's important to use the same colors that you've already been using to help you create other colors. This way your palette looks um, balanced. So there's my yellow. Paper towel, clean. And now I'm going to grab some of that blue that I've been using. I'm going to set it off to the side because it's a lot of blue. I'm going to grab a tiny bit, mix it in here. Yeah, I kind of like it. I want it a little bit more yellow. So clean my brush, clean water, grab some more of that nice warm yellow. A full brush of yellow goes back into here. Okay. 
Okay, maybe even more yellow. Clean my brush. Yeah, so that I don't get my paints messy. Let me keep them clean. Okay, more. Okay, now I like this. Okay, and so now your brush is full of this yummy green color, and you can start and paint a leaf. A leaf, um, the way I'm going to paint these is by um, changing the pressure I apply to the brush as I go up and down the page. So I'm going to start with very low pressure, and then I'm going to apply a whole lot of pressure, and then I'm going to release the pressure okay so let's try and over here and we're just gonna pull it down very low pressure drag high pressure pull down 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 and then up again very low pressure and that would be a some part of a leaf okay so let's try and do this again in some other area maybe over here Low pressure, high pressure, low pressure. And I would only do this if your background is, if it's, all of this is dry, okay? If it's not dry, then try and practice on some parts that are dry. Or here we go, low pressure, high pressure, low pressure, right? And we have a little leaf. For those leaves that I have there, you kind of have to go on a curve, and it's usually three strokes, two, three, sometimes four strokes to create a leaf. Okay, so you go, let's make a big leaf here. We're going to go low pressure, high pressure, low pressure. Go back to the same point and add a curve. And there is a leaf. Yeah, and you can go back and maybe add like a shading to your leaf if you wanted to add a little bit more color, help it move around, or if you wanted to change it completely or like go and do something interesting, you can grab a little bit like a different shade of green while it's wet and add side to it. I wouldn't do it exactly like this, it's just a show for you. Um, not the best choice of colors, <laughs> but it would work, okay? So clean the brush, get some paint. My old paint on my palette got all mixed up, so don't catch up on the color. This is just practice right now. And uh, let's paint these, the leaves, okay? Just practice on your practice sheet. So you're gonna do low pressure, high pressure release. Then start at the same point, release. Maybe go a little bit longer, yeah? Grab another point and again go low, high, low release. And release. And then super low, low, low pressure so that you can make a stem. And then add another leaf here. Maybe like that. Yeah. So just play with it and see, see what you can shape. Okay. Sometimes I'd go like that and then kind of break it up somewhere and like leave open white spaces for your highlights because you can't really paint, paint white on top of your watercolor. That's not going to work. Okay, I, I did say I didn't like this color, but I like what's happening here. Bring this up. Isn't this amazing how color spreads? I just love this. Okay. 
And then for the small, okay, medium sized leaves that are right here, we're gonna create some very light color, very light green. And uh, you're just not gonna, um, let's turn it this way over here so we have room to work. Um, you just do not drag, you do low, high, low pressure, but you just kind of do it fast, okay? Low, high, low, low, high, low, and that's it. You just kind of move them up and down the vine, just like that. And this way you can make smaller leaves, low, high, move. Yeah, low, high pressure up, low, high pressure up. Okay. Susan, you're late, but enjoy the lesson from now. Welcome, Susan. I am so glad you could join us. Um, somebody said they're such beautiful leaves. Well, thank you. What a color does that? You know, once you kind of get a grasp of, of the stroke, you can do a lot of, a whole lot of fun things with that. Oh, here. This was in my level two, oh gosh, a couple months ago. I don't remember. A couple months ago. But with watercolor, you can do leaves like that, which makes me think of my favorite dill. You can do leaves like that. You can do leaves like this. You can do petals. And pretty much, <coughs> you can, excuse me, you can do petals like this. Pretty much all of this is the uh, going between high and low pressure. Okay. Okay. Let's get back to our painting. Here we are. Okay. If you're having fun, Give me a thumbs up. I know it's sometimes hard to interact while while you're painting, right? Your hands are busy painting, not typing. <laughs> All right, let's do, let's paint our big ones. So we're gonna have a triple big leaf going through here, through this corner right here. There's gonna be one leaf. So see, like my, my brush had some paint on it and so I just dragged it on and it gave me direction where it needs to be. The middle leaf, one leaf over here, okay? And then we'll try and squeeze a triple right in here, okay? Thank you for thumbs up. Luba, do we need to do the stream yard for every Facebook Live? And that's Diane. Diane, I really have no clue, but I think because it's maybe a different group, maybe it requires it again because it's a closed group. It's like a privacy thing. And I apologize for that, but it's like the only way um, it's the only way I can get two cameras and a decent connection and the recording done <laughs> in one sitting. Okay, I'm getting thumbs up. Woohoo! Thank you. Okay, let's let's do the leaves. Okay, so look what happened. My all my carefully crafted paint has leaked. So I'm just gonna go ahead and pick up this blue a little bit. And then add a couple drops of water into this. There. And then I'm going to pick up some nice yellow that we already used. My nice, warm, sunny yellow and put it in here. And then I'm going to start slowly Oh yeah, there, this is what I want. Oh, and I'm off camera and you couldn't see what I did, 
but I just added some yellow to this bright green that I have here, okay? All right, let's paint some leaves. So, and I'm gonna go on the curve and again on the curve and on the curve, triple. And again on the curve, on the curve. And maybe another one here also curvy, but I will make this one a little bit longer. And curvy and curvy, and I'm gonna leave some white for my highlights. I'm gonna do this one also a little bit longer. So that it's just, I think it's just fun. And I'm leaving some white in between my strokes, right here. Okay, and then here and here. Okay, that's gonna be tricky, but we can put it in. I know we can, there's another leaf. And another right here, small one. And now I'm grabbing the same paint I've been using with the same brush. And I'm going to go over my strokes, but not the full way. So I'm kind of repeating my strokes a little bit. But all I'm doing here is I'm adding a little bit more pigment to some parts of my leaves. And this is what makes them look so interesting sometimes. <laughs> Ooh, heart, thank you. Okay. Clean your brush. Got my paper towel. Okay, let's make a little bit of very light. It is kind of green, but it's kind of gray. So let's put a little bit of water on the color palette right here a tiny tiny drop of the blue that we like that i like so much just a tiny drop and i'm going to clean the rest off and then i'm going to grab maybe a little bit of a bigger drop of yellow and then clean this off Let's add more water. You know what? And I'm going to add like a micro, micro drop, micro touch of magenta right in there. Do you see it? It's there. Do you see it? It's in there. And I'm going to mix it. And it's going to make the super light color. for my um, uh, medium sized leaves. And so one of them is going to be right here. Can you see it right here? And then uh, there is a branch here and the branch over here. Okay. So remember, these are like a quick touch and go. So we're gonna go light, heavy, light and go. Oh, you can't even see them very well, I guess. I maybe should add a little bit more color to this. Let's try so that at least you can see what I'm doing, right? That's okay. This will work for you. Okay, light touch up, light touch up, touch up, light, heavy, light, light, heavy, light. Okay, so don't rush through this. It's so easy to kind of try and rush through it and then, and then you look at it and you're thinking, why did I rush through this? One leaf, maybe another here. See what fits. Don't feel like you have to put a whole lot in there. 
and you can definitely overlap sometimes but sometimes it's like you overlap and then you have to go and see hmm, do i like it do i like what i just did yeah so i'm just gonna add a little bit color to these so we can see them on your screen here's another leaf here and another here okay all right shake it off relax your shoulders remember to breathe okay so i have this mixture it was the cerulean blue kind of sky blue right and some of that yellow in here and as i mix it together it gives me this interesting color that I kind of like. I think I'm going to grab a little bit more. I'm going to grab some water first because I want to add a little bit more pigment into this. I'm going to grab some more of this blue. Whoa. Right? Clean the brush. Clean the color. Clean water. Some more of this yellow. Yes, now we're talking. Beautiful. Beautiful color. And now I want to muddy it up a little bit because it's the background. I do not want such a bright background. So I'm going to go ahead and grab some of this magenta again. Take it off right here. It's too much. I took most of it off. And just put it in here and see how it kind of muddies up a little bit makes it a little bit more muted not as bright color yeah clean my brush and i've learned my lesson i am not gonna leave this on my plate because i know that it's just gonna <laughs> it's just gonna bleed into the other color and i don't want it okay so let's paint the background the background is really, oh, sorry. The background is really simple to paint here. So you just grab your brush, grab some of this wet color. The only thing you need to remember is to go around your flowers and your leaves carefully, okay? And you just tap, tap, tap like this. And then you go grab more color and you go tap, tap, tap somewhere else. Yeah, and you try and go tap, tap, tap around your flowers and your leaves. If you leave, if you have left a little bit of white somewhere, it's not a big deal. It's okay. Just use the tip of your brush and tap. Just like that. And so some of the areas of your background will get a little bit more of this um, darker green pigment, right? And some will get less. But this is what makes it look so cool. It's like the light playing in the leaves in the background. Yeah. And so sometimes I like to go back and just add a little bit more pigment to some spots and then keep going. And then we'll just, just keep going. Okay, do not worry if your 
like if it doesn't look like a line cut with a cricket, you know, it's not supposed to be. It's supposed to look very natural, very loose. Sometimes it may be easier to turn your painting and just change your direction a little bit. So don't feel like this is not allowed. It is allowed. You can turn and do whatever you need. Uh, Susan's asking me, your background is dry now, correct? Yes, we're doing wet on dry for background. It's just wet on dry. Okay, so I went through my whole background and now I have a little bit of paint left and I'm just going to go ahead and add a little bit of, a little bit more of my pigment that I have here, just here and there, you know, it really doesn't, it really doesn't matter. I love taking mine down to a lazy Susan. Ooh. I've seen people do that, putting uh, their paintings on a lazy Susan and so that you can rotate any way you need it. I've never done it. Maybe I should try. <laughs> okay. All right, so this is the watercolor part. Now we want this to dry completely. While this is drying, I'm going to put my watercolor away and clear up some space in the, on my desk and the screen so that you guys can see what's happening. So um, I recommend, I highly recommend to allow your paints to dry completely before you close them. Um, I had my paints um, one, one set I had that got um, mold and one of my students also had that issue because we just closed the, the painting and, uh, and we just closed the paints and it grew mold and it was very, very sad. Luckily, those were not expensive paints, but still still unpleasant right okay so this is drying and while this is drying i'm pulling up our practice page Oop, hold on there we go let's pull up the practice page Here is the practice page. Okay, and let's grab our waterproof pins. Micron, there is the Faber Castell, there is another one, another one, another one. I never have enough. I always want more of these. Some of them are half dry though, so it's kind of one of those things. So um, I am not sure if this pen per se is waterproof, but if you do your research, Uniball signal pens are waterproof sometimes. So like read the label 
they may be, I'm not sure if they would be cheaper than microns, kind of maybe-ish, a little bit cheaper, but they glide on paper sometimes better for me. So depending on what's happening, it sometimes works good. Okay. All right, so next step is doodling. Really, just doodling. And let's just warm up the hand so that when our painting is dry, we can just hop right into it. And this is what we can do with this. We can just doodle. I'm going to grab... Um, this is a point 0.3. This is pretty thin. Do I have a... Oh, here it is. It's a 0 0.5. It's a little bit... It's a little bit bigger, so you can see. So I really like, what do we have here? We have circles. So just grab it and fill in the whole shape with circles. Go big circles, tiny circles, big circles again. Just wake up your hand. And um, also, what this helps, it helps your imagination to start working. So you just start with circles, and then you think, oh, I could do this, and I could add that. So just, it's a good warm-up for when you're trying to doodle. Let me know who's doodling with me right now or if you're just watching. This is like, this is great to warm up your hand before you start doodling on your, on your painting. Just keep going. So maybe fill up what would that be? Not even a third, maybe a quarter, right? You say Uniball ink is waterproof. Some of it. You need to read on your pens. There's waterproof and there is not waterproof. So you need to read on the label, okay? There is... Um, there are uniball pens that are for like checkbooks and documents, and those are waterproof. But again, read the label, okay? Because I picked up, um, I picked up this. Let me see, is it here or did I take it somewhere else? Oh, I picked up this one, and it is a uniball. This pen over here. Okay, and I absolutely love the way it glides and how it's on paper and everything. But, and I love the ink, but it's not waterproof. Okay, so if I'm uh, doing some uh, monochromatic designs, this is perfect. But if I'm doing something with a back thought that, oh, I might want to add some watercolor to it on top of it or something, then not so much. Okay. Let's add like a little bit of something interesting on top of these bubbles here. And I am just taking you through my practice, how I warm up my hands. So I really, really, really like, I call them cinnamon rolls, but they're swirls really. Okay, and then there's there were some openings, so I'm just gonna go back and add little circles and maybe add like a line or a couple or a three or a four. Color this one in. Let it go, right? Just create. Just think, oh, my heart wants this. This is what I'm going to put into there. 
And of course it helps that they have a, <laughs> I have a HANA background, right? So like I have quite a few elements in my head ready to go. Like that, okay. And then maybe add a fringe. It really doesn't matter. Whatever small, um, whatever small ornamental uh, elements you can add, just add. Okay. Okay. Somebody is asking me. What size micron pen? So I use, this is a 05. I have a 02 and I have a 08. And I noticed that most of the time I use the two and the five. And then sometimes I use the eight when I want to add um, like thicker lines for contrast. But I also noticed that like Faber-Castell, they have a B, which I think is for brush. I don't know, but it's a kind of a um, felt tip. And that's a lot easier to use, a lot easier to use for your uh, fat, thick lines for contrast. Okay. Okay, so we have bubbles and then there is a little element over here that I'm going to show you how I do it these um i forgot what they're called they are super easy so you can fill all the, all the circles if you want to right those are super easy and you start with just two lines one two curvy lines like this okay and then you add like an oval shape hat to it and that's it and then you kind of start from the side and again add two lines and the curvy shape and then you can go over here and add the curvy shape or you can start over here another shape super easy right and then you kind of keep going until you fill up the whole space where you want them to be okay all right for the leaves when we get to the leaves you want them to be loose you want your lines to be like sketchy lines so you do not want to just like push your pan and drag it down on it okay so you want to use like when you sketch you just use short like flicks right so for your uh, leaves you just want to use like that let me come up closer. Ready? Like this. Okay. This is what we want. And uh, you can go and in, like bring it in a little bit. See, like that on your leaf. And then you kind of finish it like that. Okay. Stamen, flower stamen. Thank you. Thank you. I do tend to forget, like I would know words, I know them. And then when I am teaching your class and I'm broadcasting and all of that, my brain just goes into a overload i guess and that it can't think of some words sometimes okay so we have all of this that's good let's put this away your painting should be dry mine is if your painting is not completely dry just kind of first check it visually if it's shiny in any way like you look at it and it's shiny it means there is water so you do not want to touch it. You just want to let it dry. If it's dry, if it's not shiny, and you touch it, and maybe there is a little bit of dampness somewhere, just hit it with a blow dryer on low, 
just help it go a little bit. It's not going to change anything. Do not hit it with a blow dryer if you have some wetness on it because it will push the paint around where you do not want it. Yeah? Okay. Here we go. So we're going to start with the big one. And I'm going to work with my number five. And if it doesn't work, I'm going to work with something else. So the first thing is I'm going to outline the spot over here like that. Okay. And then I'm going to outline my yellow just wherever this yellow is. Okay. And then I'm going to start putting petals in. And I just go with a rounded petal like that. It's like a heart, but just rounded. There is no sharp edges or angles. Okay. And then we can add another. And I just want to make sure that all my petals are staying within my kind of blue circle, right? And where I have a bigger or where I have more wider circle, then I can make a wider, bigger petal. Let me just bring it in. Let me know if you have a question on shaping the petals. Okay. Uh, let me mute myself just for one second to, um, I just have something. Hold on just a second. Yeah, just uh, looks like we're getting a storm or something coming in. Okay. If I lose connection, which is very unlikely, but just in case, if I lose connection, I will continue filming and then I will upload this lesson into YouTube channel and uh, I, you will be able to finish. Okay. Now let's look at this flower over here. We have... An interesting situation, right? So this is how I did this one. I started with this big petal first. So it starts like a letter U, like misshapen letter U. So let's do it here. Just kind of very weird letter U and close it up like that. Then add a petal here. And then on the other side, just follow the blue right there. Then we can use kind of a funny line, yeah, to outline the yellow. And now at the rest of it is left for our, like the same kind of petals we just did on the outside of the large flower. Yeah? Okay. Someone says, I'm late. Can you send me a list of everything I need, please? Thank you. Everything you need is in guides. Go to the top of the group, find guides on there. Second guide from the top will be um, um, abstract, you know, watercolor, flowers, something or other. So the list is there. Everything you need is in that list. Okay. Um, somebody says, I'm just watching now. I don't have the right pencils. Okay. That's fine too. Thank you. You're welcome. You are very, very welcome. Okay. Here, this one, the light, light last one. So this petal, it's kind of turned, right? Turned up away from us. So we're going to start on the bottom. 
Let me try and turn my pen so that you can see. And I kind of start with a little wave like this. Can you see it? Let me bring it up to the camera so maybe it will help. Maybe this will help. Okay. So here's my little wave. Okay. And then here's my little petal. And I just shape it in right into here. Okay. Then the next petal, it's kind of, it kind of hugs this side over here, right? But then it comes into the middle here and it stops. The next one continues hugging the uh, magenta or the pink color. Now we're going to do the petal that goes here on the right side also. Just hug the color and then add the petal in. And then there is another, and I think I can squeeze one more into here. Okay. And then we can go around the yellow, uh, the, the blue color, kind of to define, define the center. Yeah. And then we can add, start putting in our larger. Petals and don't forget to make them smaller as you're going down the circle because see they kind of almost disappear on this side. Okay. All right, so your next step is to add circles into this yellow part over here for what did you call it? Stamen? <laughs> I should remember. So you can do... I'm just going to start adding little circles and big circles. And mostly try and do like... For every huge one... I would probably do two medium circles and maybe like four to five small ones just to keep it balanced. Because it's easy to overwhelm it with just small circles, but also if you use just the big ones, it's also not it's not fun to look at then. Then there is nothing to to figure out. It's like, what's, what's going on, right? And I must tell you, we kind of are rushing through this. I really, really love the, the doodle part. When you get to like really slow down and enjoy your little shapes, whatever it is that that you're creating there, whatever vision you have for the inside of your flower. But I guess lessons are Sometimes to just go fast and get, grab the technique, right? And then you can do it with anything. You know what I love to do? I love to like make random shapes with watercolor and then fill them in with uh, um, Zentangle elements. You can find them anywhere. Like my favorite source would be Pinterest. And if you feel that your hand is getting tired, I <laughs> don't feel weird or anything because my hand is getting tired too.
Okay, so um, we kind of mentioned the guides a couple of times. So in guides, you will find there's more than 40 different lessons that you're welcome to. Most of them have patterns. If there is no traceable or like, a, you know, a sketch to print out, it's usually because it is something that I will teach you, show you how to do it during class. Okay. In featured posts, I think I have a buy me a coffee link. If you would like to support what I do, it really helps me because, you know, everything I use here, like StreamYard is a subscription I need to pay for, my phone I need to pay for. <laughs> so if you um, feel cold to buy me a coffee, it would be fantastic. Okay. So we have our bubbles here, and I'm going to switch to my brush, which is a thick, right, a fat line. Um, if you do not have that, you can just use your regular pen that you have been using and add a thicker line to the outline of your, um, um, of your petals, okay? So for those who are using just the same pen they've been using. Let me show you what I mean. So it goes thicker on here and then thinner on the side. Goes like that. Okay. And then you can color it with your ink. It's just that it takes a little bit longer. Or if you have a brush like this, you just go lower pressure, higher pressure, and you can just do this a lot faster. Okay. And again. Once you're done with your painting, please, please, please take a picture of it and post it in the group. I love to see what you guys create and you guys give me ideas on what to teach also. So if you have suggestions or ideas, feel free to share it in the group. I do approve posts, so because some people just take advantage of it and share stuff for their own benefit. Let's name it that way. Okay. So see how adding a thick outline to your flower made it stand out right away. Yeah. So same thing is going to happen to this petal right here, just the side, just this side. I really tried to explain to myself what happened there, how that petal appeared there. I don't know. <laughs> it just happened and I really like it. Okay, now back to your regular pen and just add some shading to your petals. <laughs> 
and then what you can do also, you can add some shade, shading over here. Oh, sorry, over here on the top of your bubbles. Don't just don't go all the way around. Just add a little bit. Just darken some areas where there is no bubbles, like the empty spots. Just darken those. Just it will add a little bit of shading to the whole flower, like the whole shape. Then let's add the shading to this petal. And uh, we can do the next flower now. So this one has stamens. Just. Super simple. I tried not to make them like I didn't didn't want them to fill out the whole flower. Just here and there. What size was the thick one? The thick one was the B. It's the B, and it's the uh, Faber Castell Pit Artist pen. They are the same. Uh, you can find them in any, um, uh, oh my goodness, any craft store, any large craft store. Okay. So now these here, these petals, they also are going to get thick lines on the tops. And then, of course, the petals. And the shading. Now the small one, there's the bubbles. Okay. And uh, you can kind of add a little bit more black going around this whole thing, working around your bubbles. You kind of just adding more black outline to this. Okay. Now this petal is like here. That is the big part and we're not going to put anything on the bottom and then this over here i kind of want it to be more pressure a lot pressure Just like that. Okay. 
And that. Okay, shading. Let's move on to leaves. So let's do the big ones first. Remember, uh, sketchy motions and drag it in. Okay, now those leaves that are hardly, that you can hardly see, but they are there. And now we're going to add these puppies over here, the little ones. And that is super easy. So you just kind of create a line, a wiggly line, not to see, just a wiggly line. And you just start adding bunny ears, bunny ears, bunny ears, bunny ears, left and right, left and right, left and right. <laughs> see, bunny ears. Don't think too hard about it. Just pick another spot. Bring your ears. Yeah. Just don't overdo it. Just maybe add a few here and a few there. So I've made a line starting in the on the top. That's the top bunny ear. And then I'm going left, right, left, right, left, right. And they, the more different they look, the better. So don't even, don't try to. Oh, 
overthink it. <laughs> Don't overthink it. Just add them in. Okay. Put them everywhere you have room. It's your filler. Okay, I'm going to turn this because it's easier for me to go down. Okay. Ta-da! Love, love, love the thought everything would have to be brush strokes. Yes. Yes. Wow. Leah says, wow. Thank you, right? I want to see yours, though. <laughs> so here it is. Here is the painting that we've been working on. Um, please excuse me for one second. I'm going to run this real quick. Okay, it shouldn't be too loud, but if it is, I apologize. Okay, so here's what I did here. I have artist tape, right, holding my paper to the acrylic board. Sometimes this tape has too strong adhesive and it will pull the paper. And to help with that, I just warm it up with the heat gun. You can also use the blow dryer. Just warm it up and it will come off so much easier. And it's done. Judy says, beautiful. Thank you. All right. So please, let me see here. Can I get my face back on there? Okay. So make sure you share your painting. I would love to see what you created. And um, I will see you next week for some other lesson. I think we're painting a butterfly next time right and you can use this technique and uh, fill up this your practice page yeah and then you can just break it into three or four strips and create bookmarks with that that is always always fun okay i will see you next time bye